Nestled away in the northeastern Adirondacks, near Anchiota, New York, sits the Six Nations Indian Museum. This modest, rough-hewn structure was conceived and established in 1954 by educator, orator, and visionary Ray Fadden. One of the greatest, the deepest loves that my father had was toward uh, the natural world. I mean, he lo loved the forest and the streams and the rivers and the lakes and so forth. And then as my father grew older, uh, he was still a child, but somehow he learned that there were, was a cultural group of people that had a, a sensitivity toward the natural world, a natural sense of the fact that we're part of it. We're not something above, or above it, hovering above it, but we're part of the natural world. And of course, those cultures are Native American cultures. And so because of that understanding and learning, he began to learn more about them as a cultural group and uh, understandably zeroed in on the Six Nations or the Iroquois Confederacy. Celebrating one's Native history and contributions to the world was frowned upon in the early 20th century, especially in schools. Fadden's agenda was to celebrate the heritage of the Haudenosaunee people. You know, like my grandfather, when he started this, was, it was kind of urgent. There was an urgent need to teach the culture because it was, it was disappearing. General attitude uh, towards Native people, uh, you know, beginning, you know, the late 1800s right into the 50s and 60s, really wasn't that positive. Especially in the educational system, the schools, they didn't teach the children or anybody really the history of the Native people, and especially Native people, to be proud. And you could see that the Native kids really didn't have a sense of who they were uh, identity-wise. And he couldn't teach it out in the open. It wasn't allowed. Uh, the schools were run by non-natives. And one of his uh, biggest obstacles was uh, the non-native administration. And also, um, amazingly, was the church. Uh, they actually had masses where they would preach against what my grandfather was teaching. Work on the museum began when Fadden retired from the St. Regis Mohawk School and moved to Anchiota. And my father, as long as I can remember, always had this idea of having a, a museum, a place like this. And so that was always his dream to do this. Uh, then he uh, got a saw and got some help and went out in the woods and cut down some trees. And he envisioned a, a building with six rooms. And each room would represent Mohawk, Oneida, and so forth. The collection of artifacts and cultural items come from a wide variety of sources. As I grew up and I was a young lad, and my father ha always had a lot of native things uh, in the house, and our house started looking like a museum, but he'd have trunks with stuff in it that he'd gathered. Things like uh, there was a fellow who came here once, parked out parallel to the uh, museum. He came in, and he told us uh, he was from Danamora up the road here. And he said, you know, he says, I found this thing in the woods. And he popped uh, the trunk, and we looked in, and there was a box, and inside of the box was an Iroquois pottery bowl. And he, he gave it to us. And then uh, we, we had it put in there. It's in the third room in the corner. And it's been estimated to be about five centuries year old. And a, a number of uh, pictographic record belts that are within this room he produced over the years. And the most outstanding one, although they're all quite beautiful and effective, is this uh, long belt that's 75 feet long that goes around the room. And that tells the epic story and pictograph symbolism of when the Iroquois Confederacy was formed. Ray Fadden passed on to Galuhiaga in 2008 at the age of 98, but his museum lives on, and so does his rich legacy. So I think now, like our main, one of the main goals here is to, again, reaffirm the teachings that my grandfather taught, that he learned and uh, that go back thousands of years, that our, um, these value systems, these stories, uh, the code of, of being a good human are passed down throughout the generations. What I try to do when I see young Mohawk kids or young Native kids is to remind them that they're living during a good time. They're able to learn the language, they're able to learn the stories out in the open. They're able to wear the traditional outfits, you know, hold their heads up high. And so it's a responsibility 
to them to keep it going, to learn the language, to keep the stories going. We're all here, we have things, we have a past, but we also have a present and we have a future.